Hello viewers and welcome to Better Than Wolves episode 30 where spiders have just de devastated my crops. Uh, apparently they stopped being attracted to my chicken over there and now they they came after me and well they they fell while chasing me and, and landed on several of my crops. Which is saddening but uh, we'll just have to replant and carry on. It looks like I might have gotten all of the seedlings back, which is the best news. So just plant that, plant this, and I assume you came from over here. Alright, so now that that's all fixed, just gonna do a little harvesting here. Uh, as you might have seen in the intro, I don't know if I started recording right away fast enough, uh, but there is a new version out. It is version 4.A, B, C, D, E, F, potato. And with that, we have some pretty interesting changes. Uh, let me just find a spot for my cocoa beans over here. And I will go through them in a moment. All right, now that I am safe in this area, I'll just read it over. Uh, summarizing, hopefully. Uh, we have a new set of snow blocks that serve as early game building material. Uh, they're left for the player to discover, but one thing to note is that you can build out sideways with them if proper care is taken. And then they have a new item called Old Snow, but that you cannot craft. Uh, we also now have the ability to partially open wicker baskets by right-clicking them. So that's actually something we can check out. Since we have a fair amount of sugar canes going already, I say why not? Let's make a whisker basket and see what this is all about. So we have our wicker basket here, and if I place it this way, I right click it. Oh, wow. Okay, that is really cool. And apparently they close by the player walking away from them, I believe is one of the next lines that is in the change log. There it is, okay. So apparently there's no closing animation. If there is, it was out of my line of sight. Uh, actually, let's try that. Since I can back up far enough this way, we'll open it and back up. Oh, okay, there is a closing animation. That's pretty cool. Uh, it added the ability for lava to set nearby blocks on fire directly. This applies to stuff like campfires, unlit torches, logs, and etc. that may burn without a neighboring fire block. So he then warns, uh, keep this in mind if you're doing any weird builds like lava running through log sluices, which really just makes sense because lava would burn all of that stuff. I am a little bit worried about having lava closer to this, but I was already having those issues. So unless he made the burning reach go farther than it was before, uh, this, this little bit should be safe. Uh, I am going to pause since the sun is up and I can start doing stuff now while I read the rest of the log changes. Uh, he added the ability for ice and snow blocks, snow cover blocks, so those are the new snow blocks, to melt due to nearby fire sources rather than just light levels, which is, it makes sense. Uh, added the ability for fire charges to directly ignite blocks like campfires, brick ovens, and torches. Added snow cover blocks to drop snowballs, regardless of how they're harvested. Changed the texture on wicker baskets to provide an indication of which way they are facing. I assume... Uh, I guess it's the, there's lots of lines here and fewer lines there. This looks like a bit of a latch now, rather than it's just uniform. So that makes sense. That's cool. Um, he changed ghasts to drop fire charges instead of niter to make farming them a tad more rewarding. He changed the zombie AI to make them a little more interested in accessorizing their wardrobe. Uh, to me, that makes that makes me think that they will go after nearby dropped items. Makes sense. Or they might prioritize the player over uh, passive mobs. Either way, a little bit dangerous. Changed the way cooking items are positioned with the, within the brick oven so they are a little more visible and they orient correctly to the direction the oven is facing. And then in the new block, we have changed how items eject from wicker baskets, so they tend to travel towards the front, which would be the direction it opens. Uh, adjusted the selection box on chewed logs and log spikes to be a little less obtrusive. 
Uh, my guess is those are the different stages of breaking trees so that their hitbox is smaller. That's that's a decent change. Uh, six, fixed a problem with gas sounds in the overworld that was causing them to be louder than intended. Fixed a problem where bloodwood saplings couldn't plant themselves if ash was covering a soul sand block. Fixed a vanilla problem where you can mine blocks while using an item like a drawing a bow, blocking with a sword, etc. Removed the generation of ash from the burning of bloodwood leaves as it didn't really suit the nether well. That makes sense to me. Otherwise you'd have ash everywhere. Uh, removed the ability to play string as a block as it never worked particularly well and conflicts with some of the design intent behind early game storage. So laying down string to stash it for later is no longer an option. I didn't use it because I kept it all on my person, but it does make sense that a player would want to lay that down for later. Let's see, what else? Where was I? Removed the crafting recipes for tripwire hooks, given the above, and given they are duplicate functionality with the lens that never suited the mod very well. And he goes on to say, I probably should have just done this when they were first released, but I was much more timid about removing vanilla features back then. You can still melt them down for a bit of iron in the crucible if you have any laying about. And finally, he removed the tripwire and dispenser traps from newly generated jungle temples to fit the above. Also removed all remaining piston and redstone blocks from newly generated non-looted temples to negate their sometimes progression-breaking impact. That makes sense. One of my videos actually featured that. Uh, when I went on a journey to find pumpkins, I actually came across a non-looted jungle temple, and I was able to obtain items that I haven't used yet, but are decently breaking. Uh, the sticky piston, the dispenser, I guess the hand crank isn't so bad, but these redstone bits were part of it, and I am significant. I am ahead of where I could be right now. I haven't made use of the pistons yet, but I assume that would be useful for something like a stone generator, which I'm slightly ahead of in creating then. But for me, the biggest, the biggest change was these three diamonds that were in the chests. So I'm not sure if he would have changed that at all, because that, that was a bit breaking. I, would, I guess I wouldn't say directly breaking, but it most certainly changed the stage of the game that I am at. I didn't have to hunt for those diamonds. I just... Well, I didn't have to mine for those diamonds. I just ended up hunting for it with them. So with that, that uh, brings about the last of the features that we have. Slotted. I'm going to build this up a bit. So I can exit this way in the future without having to jump. I'm hearing some zombies around. They're probably... Uh-oh. That sounded like a pig getting hurt. No. We're... Oh, yep. A pig somehow escaped into this section and got kicked by a cow. So it looks like I definitely won't be able to put anything in this pen, which tells me I really need to change how that's structured relatively soon here. I want to, before doing anything else, change this pork chop. So it looks like they might be sitting a little farther forward than they used to. I'm not sure if I can tell where it is any easier. But let's cook it and see, see if there's anything there. Might as well cook that pork chop anyway. And then, after that. Okay, so it looks like the item is in front of the fire a little bit more rather than behind it, which is definitely a, a good change. I want to find out where these stupid zombies are that just died. They sound like they're really close by, but I cannot hear them. Or see them, rather. There's one right here. There was another here. Hmm. It is a mystery. So, in this episode, I believe, while I was waiting around at night, before the end of the last episode, 
I determined that I should just go to the nether to get better light sources. As that will uh, greatly assist keeping mobs out from around here. And once I get grinding going, I can then use it to create permanent torches. Both of which are quite useful for getting to the next stages and maintaining with food. I do realize that I had said that I might consider uh, some other options. One of them being building a new pen for the passive mobs. And I still do plan to do that. But I think it might be the best choice to just go ahead and at least dip our toes. Dip my toes into the nether. Since uh, that'll be a, a really good next step to the general safety of this living area. And is this? Yep, there's a log up there that I didn't catch last time. Just hop up onto this log. Yes, yes, using some energy. But it's all in the name of getting rid of those floating trees, which I don't think anybody likes. Maybe some people don't care. I care a little bit. Lightning is certainly an issue. It's burned down a lot of trees. I'm not... I, I guess I count myself lucky that it hasn't tried to burn down... Well, not that lightning itself is going to have... I count myself lucky that it has not struck in a way that it would burn down my current house. Were that blacksmith portion to catch fire, that would be quite devastating as far as the items I've gathered go in those chests, since I'm keeping all my valuables there. It might be worth considering looking into putting those in a more underground location. I also planted some more hemp right there, as you can see. I added that other gate because mobs were just climbing up these stairs and jumping into the water. I figured it'd be a bit better to not let them do that. I'm going to grab this dirt. Ooh. More wheat. Perfect. Not that I'm using it quite yet, but it's always good to have that supply. And I'm just being very careful. Did I have my hoe still? No. Alright. Well, I'm going to go grab that. And I'm going to take a few minutes here to gather up what I need. And with that, I will be back afterwards once I've determined where I want the nether portal to go. Because we are going to the nether. See you in a few. Alrighty, through the night, I gathered up some resources, got myself mentally prepared. We are going with a minimal ensemble of materials, hopefully, to get into the nether, my, make a little base, mine some blocks, and then get the heck out of dodge. Uh, I am going to take the diamond pickaxe because that will be the fastest to dig up netherrack. I understand that it is quite risky and there's a chance that I end up losing the diamond pickaxe, but let's be honest, if I die, things are going to be pretty devastating anyway, and I have enough iron to go hunting for more diamonds, so I, th I think it's worth the risk. I plan on being as careful as possible. Obviously, that can change at the drop of a hat without any provocation, but it is what it is. I'm thinking that I'm going to make the portal somewhere over here. I was thinking on some slight hilltop just to have some sort of pedestal, I guess, maybe is a way of putting it. I suppose I don't want it too far from base. That way it can still be loaded for any shenanigans we do in the far, far future. This hilltop looks like it is promising enough. Actually, I'm going to go go slightly farther with this one. That one's even more tempting, but I'm just going to go with this minor hilltop for now. And eventually I'll clean it out, make it look pretty, do all sorts of shenanigans to it. But just for now, we are just going to do the briefest of build-ups. Because we can always change how it looks later, right? Right. So, 
I'm going to dig down, and I'm not bringing a shovel. I don't have a string, so I can't even make a shovel. I guess a shovel would have been slightly ideal for these first two blocks here, but it'll just take a little extra time. And I did, however, forget to light my torches, which is going to be a problem. I'm going to spend that extra energy? Yeah, I suppose so. So let's just build up the obsidian base. And plunk down a corner piece. And ta-da! Let's chop that out of there because we don't want that bad boy. Place down the campfire. And I'm actually going to expend the shafts to light this torch because I want to be able to light several torches to have them on my person. Just hoping that this doesn't take too much food so that I'm not wasting it for the journey back and stuff. Making a safe travel path between here and the base will be a priority sometime in the future. For sure I want to block off this at some point. Probably some sort of fence or gate or door system to contain the insanity within. Alright, that almost took the entire dealy, but it's fine. I'm gonna light spare torches just to make sure we have them on in my hot bar. Just gonna block off this section here block off this way so that nothing can get through except right here and that's gonna be us all right so without further ado Geronimo oh wait I'm going to have the clay in my hotbar rather than the campfire the clay is so I can cement a roof of some sort I'm really hoping that I'm in some sort of safer area, which this doesn't necessarily look like. Uh, but good news, that looks like a fortress right next to us. Having a solid floor is going to be a bit problematic. Hoping the ghasts don't notice us until I have Ooh, made this base. Should have had those right next to each other. Okay, this is going to be a bit trippy. Oh, and there's lava right there. Wow, good thing I didn't step backwards. Jeepers. Um, ooh. Oof. That's not good news. Okay. Oh. oh, dear. This is a problem. Oh, we have soul sand right here, too, though. Not that it matters as much in single-player mode. Uh, but I'm just gonna actually block this off right away so that we have a solid wall around us. Whoops. Okay. And now, I imagine if I chop these blocks out, I would perish. So we're gonna have to come up with some sort of solid ground to place there. Perhaps some, uh, stone slabs and the like once I get that sort of tech. I'm just gonna dig out a bit here. I'm certain that soul sand is above us at some point. Kinda wish I had a shovel to get at it. But uh, I did success we did successfully get through here without dying. Um, the other side of the portal isn't so safe. So that is a concern now. There's some of that soul sand. I think I'm just going to block this off as best I can. Okay. Alright, little guy. Don't come at us. So how do I want this? Uh, let's... Oops. Yeah, that's right. Need to have that. Clay it up. Mortar it up, I suppose, would be the more appropriate terminology. So that would be how I build... The uh, floor is another method, I suppose. Just knock it out. 
placing some mortar down there. Okay, it wasn't one block thick like I was afraid of. But I am going to mortar that, that way it doesn't fall immediately. And with that, we have a very cramped, but now safe, mini nether baths. And access to a little bit of soul sand right here. Which I am excited for. It's not immediately useful, it will be good for filtering. So I suppose I could chop at it, see if I get soul sand uh, dust, and then I can make it into one, or piles, piles of soul sand. My apologies for misspeaking. See if that's enough to make it into a, sure is. All right, and soul sand does not fall. I kind of expected it to, but I couldn't remember. Not seeing any immediate access to glowstone. We can perhaps at some point. Oh, there is some glowstone over there, which might be useful. Just close that off. And I'm going to spend the next minute or so gathering up as much netherrack as I feel, and I will be back. Alrighty, so uh, keeping in mind that nether mobs can't spawn on non nether blocks as far as I'm aware. I have placed what uh, co loose cobblestone I had to replace what I dug out. I have uh, just a little over two stacks. Two stacks and two. And I think that at least for now that is enough to call this nether journey a success. I don't want to get too greedy uh, and I, I don't have enough raw materials to mine too much more. I might mine a little bit more just using up the rest of this cobblestone for floors and whatnot. And uh, I will be back when I'm back at base. And I'm back. One thing to keep in mind when entering and exiting the nether is the time change because it doesn't stop in the overworld. So uh, obviously I encountered some issues with that. Really it was, it was midnight when I came out and I had to hop back in and then wait the night until I was ready to emerge, but here we are with plenty of netherrack to show for our spoils, and with that netherrack comes a, an excellent form of permanent light, and the ability to cook stuff without suffering, or without needing to use fuel. Uh, stuff being food. Very specifically, I can only cook food. But as soon as we get a cauldron, I can place it in this corner here and cook food without having to expend wood fuel. But what I'm going to do for now is light this place up. Because I am tired of having mobs spawn everywhere where I don't want them to be. So I'm going to run around and place some netherrack pillars, so to speak. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a shovel so that this is a little bit faster. And then I'll have a little bit of a perimeter of light. And I'm not gonna use the iron because I don't quite need it yet. I do, however, need some sticks, which I can get from these planks. Alright, one string, one rock. And there we have a shovel. So I'm gonna partially bury them in the ground. I'm going to, oh dear, uh, I guess I'm going to go hide while the rain, or before the rain passes. So I guess that won't be what I'm doing right now. I can, however, since it is not too terribly dark out yet, as I can place where I would like those to be. I want, I think I want a two block separation between any wood and this fire. I'm not going to bother putting it in any sort of special pattern, except when I'm directly by the fence. So, one, two, uh, let's see, if they set off light level 14 and I don't want monsters to spawn, I don't remember what the exact math on that is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, every eight? Sure, that sounds fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll see what this sort of pattern does. It might be that I need odd numbers. One, two, eight. Um, in order to obtain the optimal lighting level. But for now, 
we'll just leave it like this. Place campfires. So that I, okay, so this problem here is I'm one block, and I definitely don't want that to all catch fire, so I'm going to ruin the pattern. And set them here. I'm also going to move that tree. Not too terribly worried about this. I do think I want to bring this down. So it looks like this rain will probably last throughout the day and I'm not going to be doing too much exciting while that happens so let's see think 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 I might do some fishing since it's raining and then I'll bring up the efficiency of that uh, but that's not something that you all need to watch so I will be back when I'm doing something a bit more interesting than fishing or placing netherrack in the ground brief interruption of this scheduled program apparently the layout that I chose was a little incorrect as you might see that log there caught fire and uh, set fire to some of the fence and even more of the hemp crop so I've officially done over myself a couple times and apparently there were some mobs that spawned in there a night or two and they trampled those crops so I'm definitely glad that I have started this hemp crop right here should be a bit safer. Uh, I'm going to probably put a couple more. Eh, I guess that light source is fine. I like this light in the immediate vicinity. I want to try to wrap it around more. But uh, setting fire to netherrack is a bit more resource intensive than I thought. Because you have to make so many shafts to make campfires to light the netherrack instead of trying to do flint and steel because I think the flint and steel is uh, a bit iron heavy right now so that's the brief update I'm going to maybe continue doing that hoping that stops smoldering eventually and then I can remake that fence though I guess it might not matter because enemies are spawning in it or they were they shouldn't anymore there should be enough light to stop them from spawning there Anyway, I suppose I'm actually going to spend this evening using this here millstone. I have some food racked up that I can use, and I really want to get to a spot where I can tell uh, how far away from a windmill I am. And the only way to do that is to start using this. So, with that, oh, that's a bit loud. I'm just going to back away from that. I'm going to do that off camera. And I will see you probably in the next morning. Ta ta. So, all of that hemp, the 13 or so, was enough to make five fabric and seven hemp fibers. Uh, which means I am two hemp fibers short of making the sixth fabric which will have me one quarter of the way to making a windmill because you need six fabric to make one sail so I need another um, I need a lot more hemp which means I need to expand my farm a lot more for hemp and get that growing and stop it from dying because the continually dying portion is uh, what's setting me back so much so with that in mind, I think I need to invest more of the iron into just making more hoes and digging as much as I can. I actually might go get those diamonds to see if I can make a diamond axe and a diamond hoe, since those would be fairly useful. I also need iron, so really I just need to go on a... Uh, a mining expedition um, so that'll be the thing I do next and I will come back once said expedition is either underway and we find some interesting stuff or I'm back and have a decent amount of resources either way catch you when that happens while I'm down here I figured I'd give a little preview of how I'm implementing some permanent lighting it uses a lot of wood but I am setting up this netherrack trail so that my 
passage to and from this mining ravine, not mining I'm trying to do at this ravine, is lit permanently, and that way I'm not using as many torches. I know coal isn't exactly scarce, but I'd rather have this permanent light and not have to worry about, oh gosh, I'm done mining, but my entire way back is no longer lit. So, trying to make as safe a path as possible so that I can get down to those diamonds and hopefully some more iron and go from there. Uh, but that's my little update for now. Okay, things are getting a little intense down here. I've made my way down to the diamonds that I spotted from up above, and... I'm hoping to be able to extract them without too much issue. Looks like it's only going to be okay. Alright. It's more than two. I sort of covered my tracks a little bit back here. My biggest worry is someone coming down that way. I guess that's not much of a pathway. So it looks like... We're going to be getting three diamonds from this, which means I have to choose between hoe and axe. I think axe is going to be the best choice, as that's going to have some really good long-term effects. I am, however, just going to get the heck out of dodge now that we got those diamonds. Seal this up behind me. I did do a little bit of exploring in some of the portions of the mine shaft. Uh, nothing crazy to be found yet, but I am hopeful for the future. So with that, I believe this is a good wrapping up point. In the next episode, I'll hopefully have a bit of progression as far as more m iron and, oh gosh, there went our entire hemp supply. It must have caught fire overnight. Well, it's a good thing I have this crop over here because that is gonzo it must have happened when that ash block relit or something looks like parts of the fence ignite ignited as well but uh, yeah anyway with that i will bid the adieu and i will see you in the next episode ta-ta <laughs>